guys, it's Handy Jeff and in today's video we are going to be planting the seeds for our hydroponic garden. That's right, if you're new here, you might not know it, but I have a hydroponic garden that is outdoors. And although over winter pretty much every video has been about, hey, this is how you fix something, we also talk about self-sustainability on this channel, such as growing your own food, being prepared when things break, how to fix your own stuff. So if you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it if you did, because that would tell YouTube that these videos are awesome. But just looking back, the last year, since last year, we've had over 800 people subscribe to the channel. And I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. That's more than double our total subscriber count. So you might not even know that I generally, during the summer, have a hydroponic garden. So this is a cool little rock wool cube. This is what we're planting seeds into. But first, we're going to go over the two systems that I have in my backyard, why they're awesome, why you should consider growing food hydroponically, and mostly it's because I'm lazy and I don't want to do a ton of work gardening. But anyway, we're going to plant 34 seeds today, but first let's hop outside and I'm going to go over the two different systems I have in the backyard. Let's check it out. All right guys, like I said, I have two different hydroponic systems. This is the first one. This is more of a horizontal layout with a water tower even, because I got sick of filling the actual reservoir up. This particular system, I haven't done a build video on, but let me turn the camera around and I'll talk about it. So this particular system, what's cool about it is that it holds 24 plants. So as you can see, water gets pumped up out of this reservoir, gets pumped up into four different runs, and it will run all the way down here to each that are controlled individually with ball valves. So you can adjust your flow, runs into this, and then it will flow all the way back down, connect to here, and then there's actually this pipe that goes straight down into our reservoir. Completing the system and essentially making it so that water stays contained in the system. But this is a tiny little reservoir. What happens when you get zucchini that start eating a ton of water up? Well, that's what this water tower is for. And the cool thing about this water tower is I have it filled up and pipes straight into the reservoir and it runs off of this auto fill valve so that when you need water, it adds water. When you don't need water, it doesn't add water. I apologize for the birds yelling at us in the background. But also, I have developed a trellis. This is what I use to tie the tomatoes up. We're gonna be planting six of them today. And as you can see, there's still some string left over from last year. We'll get that all cleaned up when it comes time to actually plant our plants outside. But today, we are starting from seed. Let's check out the other hydroponic system we have. All right, this is the second hydroponic system that I have. It is a tower type system that actually holds 10 plants. I did do a build video on this particular one on how to build this, so if you're interested in that, check out the channel. We've got a step-by-step -step on how to build this, like I said. And the only problem is I built the base too big because I wanted it to hold enough water because the water is held down in these actual pipes right here. And it's pumped up, clear up to the top here, goes in and then drips down, feeding all of the plants all the way along there. Over here, we have ourselves a meter, very crude, but essentially operates like a, ga a gas tank meter. And we'll be able to see how much water is left in when we fill this system up. So like I said, it was a battle because I wanted this reservoir to be able to hold at least five gallons. I believe if I remember right, it's just a hair over six of what our reservoir will actually hold in the base there. But the problem is I originally designed this to be an indoor system. However, it won't fit through our back door to go to our basement. So I'm gonna slowly build this thing out so that it will go out to my other property out in the country and it will be good to go out there for this winter. However, this year I think I'm gonna leave it outside until fall comes. And this is going to be our tower that produces greens for salads and that type of thing. But let's run inside and then we're gonna get to planting 
in some rock wool cubes. It's kind of cool, so stick around. All right, so I've introduced you to our two systems. So now let me introduce you to our planting type media where we start our seeds. This is rock wool. It is pretty close to the exact same stuff that you use to insulate a wall if you've ever used rock wool insulation. I know it's not super popular here in the Midwest, but it is up north. This, however, doesn't have the hydrophobic uh, characteristics that insulation has. It doesn't have that chemical. This actually absorbs water, holds it close to your seeds, which makes it awesome. So. You might be wondering, hey, how do you cut this? They, this particular kit, and if you need any of these things, I will leave you links down below in the description. I actually ordered this from Amazon. I ordered my seed trays from Amazon, and they come with lids to go on the top of them. They're super cool, so check those out if you wanna get started on your own hydroponic garden. But comes with a set of shears. I've found cutting rock wool is a lot easier with a bread knife. Take your bread knife, and literally just cut it across. You can cut all the way down. You can cut all of these individuals. And what you want to do is you do want to separate these. And you might be wondering why. And the, que the answer to that is if you set them too close to each other and you're starting your seeds, when those roots develop that you need to grab the hydroponic solution later on, they'll actually grow into each other, keeping <laughs> these from being able to be separated and then you're in a bad world because you're going to break some roots to be able to pull them apart So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this. I've already prepared a ton of these But we're do like I said, we're doing a whole 34 seedlings today All right, so now if you've never touched rock wool before it is extremely dry We need to soak some water into these bad boys and it's gonna take a lot more water than you think. I think the cat wants to be on film. Say hi to the people, Marley. Say hi to the people. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I will fill these up and let you watch. I'll just do a time lapse. So you can see how much water this rock wall actually will seep up. Okay, so this step is important because if you just put your seeds into these rock wool cubes, it's gonna draw any and all moisture out of those seeds. So we wanna pre-soak these. I'm just making sure that this water isn't too cold. I'm gonna let it get somewhat lukewarm or close to room temperature before I start filling these cubes up. All right, we're warm. We're gonna just go ahead and come over here. And as you can see, we're just filling the bottoms up because these will wick all of that moisture up, but check out just how much water can be absorbed by one of these. We want to make sure that all of these are wet before we start planting seeds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for not only this group, but my other tray as well. All right, so once we have got a majority of this water soaked up into here, what we are gonna do is then drain off all of the excess water. It's okay to leave a little bit in the bottom, but you don't need a ton. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dump this out and do the same for the other group of rock wool. I seem to have drained a little bit too much of the water out. As you can see, there are ridges in these trays and we want water to be sitting in the ridges but not over the ridges so i'm going to go ahead and do that for both of our trays here just to make sure that there's enough because like i said these rock wool cubes will go ahead and suck up any extra moisture that there might be all right so if you've never done this before what's cool about hydroponics is that you don't have to use dirt you just mix the nutrients together, and then it continues to feed the plants all the time. It's like they're at a buffet, if that makes sense. So if you're looking forward to learning about this method of planting and growing food, hit that like button so that this video gets pushed to more people because I think this time, as well as any other time in history, we know that we should know where our food comes from because it's not always a healthy place where it does come from. 
Okay, I'm gonna use this time to show you kind of my little system. Because we're planting these so close together and starting the seeds, we need to label all of them. So I have them all labeled here in little groups of what they are. And I've got all my seeds right here. So we're gonna go ahead and plant seeds into each of these tiny little holes. And you know what? I'll give you a fast montage of you guys watching me do it. So that way you can see exactly how I'm going about it. Sometimes you may need to use a little toothpick to help get the seeds down in to the hole. That's all you gotta do and then put your toothpick in there so your plant is labeled. Okay, so as I plant these watermelon seeds, this might be a good time for me to tell you just what I'm growing. So that way you'll know exactly plants that will thrive in this type of environment because there are plants that won't. You know, last year we tried to grow a carrot and we slowly found out that a carrot won't grow hydroponically. Even though the plant thrives, the root itself doesn't do great. Now there are different methods. See, like this is like a nutrient film method that I use as well as that tower where it's just going to like drop down into it. And we may explore some more alternatives this year, but Growing root vegetables in that type of system doesn't work very well. So things that we are growing this year. Let me grab my list. We are growing cherry tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, cilantro, watermelon, cucumber, thyme, peppers, basil, dill, jalapeno, zucchini, pumpkin, strawberries, lettuce, broccoli, and spinach. So just wanted to share with you so you guys aren't wondering exactly what I'm, I'm planting. So if the seeds are very tiny, like if you could see this on my hand, those are thyme seeds. Easiest way to get tiny little seeds, click your toothpick and then go ahead and deposit it down in there. Just make sure that you get the seed off of your actual toothpick. I just want to take this moment to tell you this is what spinach seeds look like, in case you didn't know. Much bigger than you would expect, at least in my, in my eyes. Now that last was the lettuces. And I'm trying something on this. I'm genuinely trying to experiment a little bit by placing more than just one lettuce seed into the cube just to see what happens. Super duper straightforward. This is going to cause the seed tray to basically become its own greenhouse. And you can adjust your humidity using these. Genuinely, I keep them most of the way closed until I get hot enough to create a lot of condensation. Then I open them up the entire way. There's no real science to it, but that's what's cool about these seed trays is they have lids that go ahead and connect to it. All right, so the next step is to go get them some sunshine and to wait. So here are our newly planted friends next to some already planted friends. But anyway, this has been Handy Jeff. Thank you so much for watching. If you think I did an all right job, hit that thumbs up button. That will tell YouTube that, hey, I did okay, and send this video to more people so they can view it. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button, watch another video. We'll be back in another week because we post every Friday. Thank you so much. This has been Handy Jeff. See you later. Bye.